Greetings, scientists. It is I, Mr. Auslander. Um, okay, so today we're, we are going to be writing in our science notebooks. I believe we already started a, uh, a chapter called <clears throat> Observations, something to do with observations. If we didn't, um, you know, take out your science notebooks. In fact, I'm going to check somebody's right now. Thank you, Micah. I am looking in your desk. It's very, very organized, Mike. A nice job. Yes, Micah, you did it, buddy. Way to go. For Micah, his is on page three. It's called Observation versus Inference, and that's what we're going to turn to, page three. And on page three, we're going to write the word observation. Okay. An observation, boys and girls, you're going to take notes on what an observation is. It's more than just what you see. An observation is when you gather information through the use of your five senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. We're going to have a very strict no tasting rule unless the teacher, unless I tell you you can taste something. We're not going to taste things to make observations ever unless I tell you ahead of time. That will keep you safe. But we will be making a lot of observations and we're going to really practice that today. So in your notebook, our next observations are going to say gathering of information using the five senses. We're going to have a strict no tasting rule. Now there are two different types of observations. There's qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative has an L, quantitative has an N. Quan, let's do qua, the second one, quantitative with the N. The N stands for numbers. So quantitative observation is an observation that uses numbers. That's measuring. Maybe you're going to, for a quantitative, instead of saying, um, if you're measuring water, if you're making observations on water, instead of saying it's cold, you could measure its temperature. Let's say it is 20 degrees. Celsius, for example. That's quantitative because it has a number. That makes your observation more precise. Say, instead of saying something is very light, you can measure that object and say it is three grams. Right? Because light might be light to you, but it might not be light to an ant. Right? So we want to be precise. Anytime we have an observation that has numbers in it, that's a quantitative observation. Say quantitative. Thank you. And the N stands for numbers. So next to quantitative observations in your notebook, you're going to write an observation that uses numbers. Example, weight, temperature, length, things like that. You can write that for quantitative. An observation that uses numbers, example, weight, temperature, and length. Now, qualitative observation is an observation that uses descriptive words. Okay? We're going to describe it. For example, this bean. Instead of saying it is brown, we're going to describe and say there's dark brown spots on top of a light brown bean. We'll also maybe make an observation saying that there is a small white spot 
in the middle of one of the sides. I might talk about how it feels. It's got a smooth surface. But also, one other thing, when you scratch this bean, the outer shell kind of scratches off. That's an observation. If I counted the number of dark brown spots and I had a number, then that would be a quantitative observation. If I measured the length of the bean, and the length is about one centimeter, would that be qualitative or quantitative? What do you think? That's right, it would be quantitative. If I measured the width, it would also be quantitative. If I check to see if a magnet would stick to it and it doesn't stick, it's not magnetic, would that be qualitative or quantitative? Qualitative, because it's describing it without using numbers. Okay. Um, if you could describe the way it sounds when you drop it, it's kind of hard to describe that sound, um, but you could try and that would be a qualitative observation. Okay. Again, now, one thing that's important, so a qualitative observation, let's go back to our notebook. It's an observation using descriptive words. Describing the color. the texture, the smell. This doesn't really have a smell. So you could write that it has no smell, it is odorless. That would be a qualitative observation. Okay. Now an inference is different. Scientists try not to make inferences. Okay, They make observations. An observation is something you use your senses, you can prove it. An inference is something you think. It's a prediction based on some background knowledge. Let me write that. An inference is a prediction based on background knowledge. And I'll leave this up for a minute. Micah? Thanks for letting me use your notebook, buddy. For example, if you go outside and you see that the grass is wet, one person might say, I, I observed that it rained last night. Well, you don't know that. Maybe somebody left a sprinkler running. Scientists need to be careful not to make too many inferences. They have to use their senses to make observations. Right? So while we, we might see this white dot, we might think this is where uh, the sprout will come out, and that may be true, that's an inference. We want to just say that there is a white, white spot on this bean. And if a sprout starts to come out, we can observe that the sprout is coming out, but we don't want to say the sprout will come out here because we don't know that as a fact. It's not something that we can observe. Okay. Um, so I hope this makes sense. Uh, the substitute teacher will be passing out pennies. When you get your penny, on the next page, sorry, Micah, you're going to make a T-chart. Qualitative on one side, quantitative on the other side. Above the quantitative, let's put an N for numbers. And then, when you get your pen, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like you to make some qualitative observations, being very specific in describing your pen. Then I would like you to make some quantitative observations using numbers. You're probably going to need a ruler. Um, and 
do your very best work, okay? Uh, when you're done, I would like you on the bottom to try to make a sketch of your penny. Remember to use the ABCD checklist in your notebook on page two. Make it an accurate, big, colorful, and detailed, very detailed sketch of your pen. When you're done, you can read quietly. Do your best, scientists. I can't wait to see your notebooks.